The Rockwell B-1 Lancer is a supersonic variable sweep wing, heavy bomber used by the United States Air Force. It is commonly called the Bone from B-1. It is one of three strategic bombers in the U.S. Air Force fleet as of 2018, the other two being the B-2 Spirit and the B-52 Stratofortress. The B-1 was first envisioned in the 1960s as a platform that would combine the Mach 2 speed of the B-58 Hustler with the range and payload of the B-52, and was meant to ultimately replace both bombers. After a long series of studies, Rockwell International now part of Boeing, won the design contest for what emerged as the B-1A. This version had a top speed of Mach 2.2 at high altitude and the capability of flying for long distances at Mach 0.85 at very low altitudes. The combination of the high cost of the aircraft, the introduction of the AGM-86 cruise missile that flew the same basic profile, and early work on the stealth bomber all significantly affected the need for the B-1. This led to the program being cancelled in 1977, after the B-1A prototypes had been built. The program was restarted in 1981, largely as an interim measure due to delays in the B-2 stealth bomber program, with the B-2 eventually reaching initial operational capability in 1997. This led to a redesign as the B-1B, which differed from the B-1A by having a lower top speed at high altitude of Mach 1.25, but improved low altitude performance of Mach 0.96. The electronics were also extensively improved during the redesign, and the airframe was improved to allow takeoff with the maximum possible fuel and weapons load. The B-1B began deliveries in 1986 and formally entered service with Strategic Air Command SAC, as a nuclear bomber in that same year. By 1988, all 100 aircraft had been delivered. In the early 1990s, following the Gulf War and concurrent with the disestablishment of SAC and its reassignment to the newly formed Air Combat Command, the B-1B was converted to conventional bombing use. It first served in combat during Operation Desert Fox in 1998 and again during the NATO action in Kosovo the following year. The B-1B has supported U.S. and NATO military forces in Afghanistan and Iraq. The Air Force had 66 B-1Bs in service as of September 2012. The B-1B is expected to continue to serve into the 2030s, with the Northrop Grumman B-21 Raider to begin replacing the B-1B after 2025. The B-1s in inventory are planned to be retired by 2036. Topic. Development. Topic. Background In 1955, the USAF issued requirements for a new bomber combining the payload and range of the Boeing B-52 Stratofortress with the Mach 2 maximum speed of the Convair B-58 Hustler. In December 1957, the USAF selected North American Aviation's B-70 Valkyrie for this role. The Valkyrie was a six-engine bomber that could cruise at Mach 3 at high altitude 70,000 feet or 21,000 meters. Soviet interceptor aircraft, the only effective anti-bomber weapon in the 1950s, were already unable to intercept the high-flying Lockheed U-2. The Valkyrie would fly at similar altitudes, but much higher speeds, and was expected to fly right by the fighters. By the late 1950s, however, anti-aircraft surface-to-air missiles SAMs, could threaten high-altitude aircraft, as demonstrated by the 1960 downing of Gary Powers U-2. The USAF Strategic Air Command SAC, was aware of these developments and had begun moving its bombers to low-level penetration even before the U-2 downing. This tactic greatly reduces radar detection distances through the use of terrain masking, using features of the terrain like hills and valleys. The line of sight from the radar to the bomber can be broken, rendering the radar and human observers incapable of seeing it. Additionally, radars of the era were subject to clutter from stray returns from the ground and other objects, which meant a minimum angle existed above the horizon where they could detect a target. Bombers flying at low altitudes could remain under these angles simply by keeping their distance from the radar sites. 
This combination of effects made SAMs of the era ineffective against low-flying aircraft. The same effects also meant that low-flying aircraft were difficult to detect by higher-flying interceptors, since their radar systems could not readily pick out opposing aircraft against the clutter from ground reflections lack of look-down, shoot-down capability. The switch from high-altitude to low-altitude flight profiles severely affected the B-70, whose design was highly tuned to provide the desired high-altitude performance. Planners outlined a series of low-level profiles for the B-70, but higher aerodynamic drag at low level limited the B-70 to subsonic speed while dramatically decreasing its range. The result would be an aircraft with somewhat higher subsonic speed than the B-52, but less range. Unsuited for the new low-altitude role, and because of a growing shift to the Intercontinental Ballistic Missile ICBM force, the B-70 bomber program was cancelled in 1961 by President John F. Kennedy, and the two XB-70 prototypes were used in a supersonic research program. Although never intended for the low-level role, the B-52's flexibility allowed it to outlast its intended successor as the nature of the air war environment changed. The B-52's huge fuel load allowed it to operate at lower altitudes for longer times, and the large airframe allowed the addition of improved radar jamming and deception suites to deal with radars. During the Vietnam War, the concept that all future wars would be nuclear was turned on its head, and the Big Belly modifications increased the B-52's total bomb load to 60,000 pounds 27,000 kilograms, turning it into a powerful tactical aircraft which could be used against ground troops along with strategic targets from high altitudes. The much smaller bomb bay of the B-70 would have made it much less useful in this role. Topic. Design studies and delays Although effective, the B-52 was not ideal for the low-level role. This led to a number of aircraft designs known as penetrators, which were tuned specifically for long-range low-altitude flight. The first of these designs to see operation was the supersonic F-111 fighter bomber, which used variable sweep wings for tactical missions. Similar aircraft also emerged for other users as well, notably the BACTSR-2, and later, Panavia Tornado and Suhoi Su-24. A number of studies on a strategic range counterpart followed. The first post-B-70 strategic penetrator study was known as the Subsonic Low Altitude Bomber slab, which was completed in 1961. This produced a design that looked more like an airliner than a bomber, with a large swept wing, T-tail, and large high-bypass engines. This was followed by the similar Extended Range Strike Aircraft ERSA, which added a variable sweep wing, then in vogue in the aviation industry. ERSA envisioned a relatively small aircraft with a 10,000-pound payload and a range of 8,750 nautical miles 16,200 kilometers, 10,070 miles, including 2,500 nautical miles 4,600 kilometers, 2,900 miles, flown at low altitudes. In August 1963, the similar low-altitude manned penetrator design was completed, which called for an aircraft with a 20,000-pound bomb load and somewhat shorter range of 7,150 nautical miles 13,240 kilometers, 8,230 miles. These all culminated in the October 1963 Advanced Manned Precision Strike System AMPSS, which led to industry studies at Boeing, General Dynamics, and North American. In mid-1964, the USAF had revised its requirements and retitled the project as Advanced Man Strategic Aircraft AMSA, which differed from AMPSS primarily in that it also demanded a high-speed high-altitude capability, similar to that of the existing Mach 2-class Convair B-58 Hustler. Given the lengthy series of design studies, Rockwell engineers joked that the new name actually stood for America's most studied aircraft. The arguments that led to the cancellation of the B-70 program had led some to question the need for a new strategic bomber of any sort. 
The USAF was adamant about retaining bombers as part of the nuclear triad concept that included bombers, ICBMs, and submarine-launched ballistic missiles SLBMs, in a combined package that complicated any potential defense. They argued that the bomber was needed to attack hardened military targets and to provide a safe counterforce option because the bombers could be quickly launched into safe loitering areas where they could not be attacked. However, the introduction of the SLBM made moot the mobility and survivability argument, and a newer generation of ICBMs, such as the Minuteman III, had the accuracy and speed needed to attack point targets. During this time, ICBMs were seen as a less costly option based on their lower unit cost, but development costs were much higher. Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara preferred ICBMs over bombers for the Air Force portion of the deterrent force and felt a new expensive bomber was not needed. McNamara limited the AMSA program to studies and component development beginning in 1964. Program studies continued. IBM and Autonetics were awarded AMSA Advanced Avionics study contracts in 1968. McNamara remained opposed to the program in favor of upgrading the existing B-52 fleet and adding nearly 300 FB-111s for shorter range roles then being filled by the B-58. He again vetoed funding for AMSA aircraft development in 1968. Topic. B-1A program President Richard Nixon re-established the AMSA program after taking office, keeping with his administration's flexible response strategy that required a broad range of options short of general nuclear war. Nixon's Secretary of Defense, Melvin Laird, reviewed the programs and decided to lower the numbers of FB-111s, since they lacked the desired range, and recommended that the AMSA design studies be accelerated. In April 1969, the program officially became the B-1A. This was the first entry in the new bomber designation series, first created in 1962. The Air Force issued a request for proposals in November 1969. Proposals were submitted by Boeing, General Dynamics and North American Rockwell in January 1970. In June 1970, North American Rockwell's design was selected and was awarded a development contract. The original program called for two test airframes, five flyable aircraft, and 40 engines. This was cut in 1971 to one ground and three flight test aircraft. The company changed its name to Rockwell International and named its aircraft division North American Aircraft Operations in 1973. A fourth prototype, built to production standards, was ordered in the fiscal year 1976 budget. Plans called for 240 B-1 as to be built, with initial operational capability set for 1979. Rockwell's design featured a number of features common to 1960s U.S. designs. Among these was the use of a crew escape capsule that ejected as a unit during emergencies, which was introduced to improve survivability in the case of an ejection at high speed. Additionally, the design featured large variable sweep wings in order to provide both high lift during takeoff and landing, and low drag during a high-speed dash phase. With the wings set to their widest position the aircraft had considerably better lift and power than the B-52, allowing it to operate from a much wider variety of bases. Penetration of the Soviet Union's defenses would take place at supersonic speed, crossing them as quickly as possible before entering into the less defended. Heartland, where speeds could be reduced again. The large size and fuel capacity of the design would allow the dash portion of the flight to be relatively long. In order to achieve the required Mach 2 performance at high altitudes, the exhaust nozzles and air intake ramps were variable. Initially, it had been expected that a Mach 1.2 performance could be achieved at low altitude, which required that titanium be used in critical areas in the fuselage and wing structure. The low altitude performance requirement was later lowered to Mach 0.85, reducing the amount of titanium and therefore cost. A pair of small vanes mounted near the nose are part of an active vibration damping system that smooths out the otherwise bumpy low altitude ride. The first 3B1 as featured the escape capsule that ejected the cockpit with all four crew members inside. 
The fourth B-1A was equipped with a conventional ejection seat for each crew member. The B-1A mock-up review occurred in late October 1971. The first B-1A prototype, Air Force Serial No. 740158, flew on 23 December 1974. Three more B-1A prototypes followed. As the program continued the per unit cost continued to rise in part because of high inflation during that period. In 1970, the estimated unit cost was $40 million, and by 1975, this figure had climbed to $70 million. Topic. New problems and cancellation In 1976, Soviet pilot Viktor Belenko defected to Japan with his MiG-25 Foxbat. During debriefing he described a new Super Foxbat, almost certainly referring to the MiG-31 that had looked down, shoot down radar in order to attack cruise missiles. This would also make any low-level penetration aircraft visible and easy to attack. Given that the B-1's armament suite was similar to the B-52, and it now appeared no more likely to survive Soviet airspace than the B-52, the program was increasingly questioned. In particular, Senator William Proxmire continually derided the B-1 in public, arguing it was an outlandishly expensive dinosaur. During the 1976 federal election campaign, Jimmy Carter made it one of the Democratic Party's platforms, saying, the B-1 bomber is an example of a proposed system which should not be funded and would be wasteful of taxpayers' dollars. When Carter took office in 1977 he ordered a review of the entire program. By this point the projected cost of the program had risen to over $100 million per aircraft, although this was lifetime cost over 20 years. He was informed of the relatively new work on stealth aircraft that had started in 1975, and he decided that this was a better avenue of approach than the B-1. Pentagon officials also stated that the AGM-86 air-launched cruise missile ALCM launched from the existing B-52 fleet would give the USAF equal capability of penetrating Soviet airspace. With a range of 1,500 miles 2, kilometers, the ALCM could be launched well outside the range of any Soviet defenses and penetrate at low altitude like a bomber, with a much lower radar cross-section due to smaller size, and in much greater numbers at a lower cost. A small number of B-52s could launch hundreds of ALCMs, saturating the defense. A program to improve the B-52 and develop and deploy the ALCM would cost perhaps 20% of the price to deploy the planned 244 B-1 as, on 30 June 1977, Carter announced that the B-1A would be cancelled in favor of ICBMs, SLBMs, and a fleet of modernized B-52s armed with ALCMs. Carter called it, one of the most difficult decisions that I've made since I've been in office. No mention of the stealth work was made public with the program being top secret, but today it is known that in early 1978 he authorized the Advanced Technology Bomber ATB, project, which eventually led to the B-2 spirit. Domestically, the reaction to the cancellation was split along partisan lines. The Department of Defense was surprised by the announcement. Internal expectations were that the number of B-1s ordered would be reduced to around 150. Congressman Robert Dornan RCA, claimed, they're breaking out the vodka and caviar in Moscow. In contrast, it appears the Soviets were more concerned by large numbers of ALCMs representing a much greater threat than a smaller number of B-1s. Soviet news agency TASS commented that, the implementation of these militaristic plans has seriously complicated efforts for the limitation of the strategic arms race. Western military leaders were generally happy with the decision. NATO commander Alexander Haig described the ALCM as an attractive alternative to the B-1. French General Georges Biz stated, The B-1 is a formidable weapon, but not terribly useful. For the price of one bomber, you can have 200 cruise missiles. Flight tests of the four B-1A prototypes for the B-1A program continued through April 1981. The program included 70 flights totaling 378 hours. 
A top speed of Mach 2.22 was reached by the second B1A. Engine testing also continued during this time with the YF-101 engines totaling almost 7,600 hours. Topic. Shifting priorities It was during this period that the Soviets started to assert themselves in several new theaters of action, in particular through Cuban proxies during the Angolan Civil War starting in 1975 and the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan in 1979. U.S. strategy to this point had been focused on containing communism and preparation for war in Europe. The new Soviet actions revealed that the military lacked capability outside these narrow confines. The U.S. Department of Defense responded by accelerating its rapid deployment forces concept but suffered from major problems with airlift and sealift capability. In order to slow an enemy invasion of other countries, air power was critical, however the key Iran-Afghanistan border was outside the range of the U.S. Navy's carrier-based attack aircraft, leaving this role to the U.S. Air Force. Although the B-52 had the range to support on-demand global missions, its long runway requirements limited the forward basing possibilities. During the 1980 presidential campaign, Ronald Reagan campaigned heavily on the platform that Carter was weak on defense, citing the cancellation of the B-1 program as an example, a theme he continued using into the 1980s. During this time Carter's defense secretary, Harold Brown, announced the stealth bomber project, apparently implying that this was the reason for the B-1 cancellation. Topic. B-1B program On taking office, Reagan was faced with the same decision as Carter before, whether to continue with the B-1 for the short term, or to wait for the development of the ATB, a much more advanced aircraft. Studies suggested that the existing B-52 fleet with ALCM would remain a credible threat until 1985. It was predicted that 75% of the B-52 force would survive to attack its targets. After 1985, the introduction of the SA-10 missile, the MiG-31 interceptor and the first Soviet Airborne Early Warning and Control AWACS systems would make the B-52 increasingly vulnerable. During 1981, funds were allocated to a new study for a bomber for the 1990s time frame which led to developing the Long Range Combat Aircraft LRCA project. The LRCA evaluated the B-1, F-111, and ATB as possible solutions, and emphasis was placed on multi-role capabilities, as opposed to purely strategic operations. In 1981, it was believed the B-1 could be in operation before the ATB, covering the transitional period between the B-52's increasing vulnerability and the ATB's introduction. Reagan decided the best solution was to procure both the B-1 and ATB, and on 2 October 1981 he announced that 100 B-1s were to be ordered to fill the LRCA role. In January 1982, the U.S. Air Force awarded two contracts to Rockwell worth a combined $2.2 billion for the development and production of 100 new B-1 bombers. Numerous changes were made to the design to make it better suited to the now expected missions, resulting in the new B-1B. These changes included a reduction in maximum speed, which allowed the variable aspect intake ramps to be replaced by simpler fixed geometry intake ramps in the newer design. This reduced the B-1B's radar signature or radar cross-section. This reduction was seen as a good trade-off for the speed decrease. High subsonic speeds at low altitude became a focus area for the revised design, and low-level speeds were increased from about Mach 0.85 to 0.92. The B-1B has a maximum speed of Mach 1.25 at higher altitudes. The B-1B's maximum takeoff weight was increased to 477,000 pounds (216,000 kilograms) from the B-1A's 395,000 pounds (179,000 kilograms). The weight increase was to allow for takeoff with a full internal fuel load and for external weapons to be carried. Rockwell engineers were able to reinforce critical areas and lighten non-critical areas of the airframe, so the increase in empty weight was minimal. 
to deal with the introduction of the MiG-31 equipped with the new Zaslan radar system, and other aircraft with look-down capability, which reduced the B-1's low flying advantage, the B-1B's electronic warfare suite was significantly upgraded. Opposition to the plan was widespread within Congress. Critics pointed out that many of the original problems remained in both areas of performance and expense. In particular it seemed the B-52 fitted with electronics similar to the B-1B would be equally able to avoid interception, as the speed advantage of the B-1 was now minimal. It also appeared that the interim time frame served by the B-1B would be less than a decade, being rendered obsolete shortly after the introduction of a much more capable ATB design. The primary argument in favor of the B-1 was its large conventional weapon payload, and that its takeoff performance allowed it to operate with a credible bomb load from a much wider variety of airfields. The USAF spread production subcontracts across many congressional districts, making the aircraft more popular on Capitol Hill. B-1A No. 1 was disassembled and used for radar testing at the Rome Air Development Center at the former Griffiths Air Force Base, New York. B-1 as No. 2 and No. 4 were then modified to include B-1B systems. The first B-1B was completed and began flight testing in March 1983. The first production B-1B was rolled out on 4 September 1984 and first flew on 18 October 1984. The 100th and final B-1B was delivered on 2 May 1988. Before the last B-1B was delivered, the USAF had determined that the aircraft was vulnerable to Soviet air defenses. Topic. Design Topic. Overview The B-1 has a blended wing body configuration, with variable sweep wing, four turbofan engines, triangular fin control surfaces and cruciform tail. The wings can sweep from 15 degrees to 67.5 degrees, full forward to full sweep. Forward swept wing settings are used for takeoff, landings and high altitude maximum crews. Aft swept wing settings are used in high subsonic and supersonic flight. The B-1's variable sweep wings and thrust-to-weight ratio provide it with improved takeoff performance, allowing it to use shorter runways than previous bombers. The length of the aircraft presented a flexing problem due to air turbulence at low altitude. To alleviate this, Rockwell included small triangular fin control surfaces or vanes near the nose on the B-1. The B-1's structural mode control system rotates the vanes automatically to counteract turbulence and smooth out the ride. Unlike the B-1A, the B-1B cannot reach Mach 2 plus speeds. Its maximum speed is Mach 1.25, about 950 miles per hour or 1,530 kilometers per hour at altitude, but its low-level speed increased to Mach 0.92, 700 miles per hour, 1,130 kilometers per hour. The speed of the current version of the aircraft is limited by the need to avoid damage to its structure and air intakes. To help lower its radar cross-section RCS, the B-1B uses serpentine air intake ducts CS duct and fixed intake ramps, which limit its speed compared to the B-1A. Vanes in the intake ducts serve to deflect and shield radar emissions from the highly reflective engine compressor blades. The B-1A's engine was modified slightly to produce the GEF-101-102 for the B-1B, with an emphasis on durability, and increased efficiency. The core of this engine has since been reused in several other engine designs, including the GEF-110 which has seen use in the F-14 Tomcat, F-15K, SG variants and most recent versions of the General Dynamics F-16 Fighting Falcon. It is also the basis for the non-afterburning GEF-118 used in the B-2 Spirit and the U-2S. The F-101 engine was the basis for the core of the extremely popular CFM-56 civil engine, which can be found on some versions of practically every small to medium-sized airliner. The nose gear cover door has controls for the auxiliary power units APIS, which allow for quick starts of the APIS upon order to scramble. Topic. Avionics. 
The B-1's main computer is the IBM AP-101, which was also used on the Space Shuttle Orbiter and the B-52 bomber. The computer is programmed with the Jovial programming language. The Lancer's offensive avionics include the Westinghouse now Northrop Grumman, and APQ-164 forward-looking offensive passive electronically scanned array radar set with electronic beam steering and a fixed antenna pointed downward for reduced radar observability, synthetic aperture radar, ground-moving target indication GMTI, and terrain-following radar modes, Doppler navigation, radar altimeter, and an inertial navigation suite. The B-1B Block D upgrade added a Global Positioning System GPS receiver beginning in 1995. The B-1's defensive electronics include the Eaton and ALQ-161A radar warning and defensive jamming equipment, which has three sets of antennas, one at the front base of each wing and the third rear facing in the tail radome. Also in the tail radome is the AN-ALQ-153 missile approach warning system pulse Doppler radar. The ALQ-161 is linked to a total of eight and AL-49 flare dispensers located on top behind the canopy, which are handled by the AN-ASQ-184 avionics management system. Each and AL-49 dispenser has a capacity of 12 MJU-23A, B flares. The MJU-23A, B flare is one of the world's largest infrared countermeasure flares at a weight of over 3.3 pounds 1.5 kilograms. The B-1 has also been equipped to carry the AL-50 towed decoy system, also aiding the B-1's survivability as its relatively low radar cross-section RCS. Although not technically a stealth aircraft in a comprehensive sense, thanks to the aircraft's structure, serpentine intake paths and use of radar absorbent material its RCS is about 1 50th of the similar sized B-52's RCS, this is about 26 square feet or 2.4 square meters, roughly equivalent to the RCS of a small fighter aircraft. Topic. Upgrades. The B-1 has been upgraded since production, beginning with the Conventional Mission Upgrade Program, CMUP, which added a new MIL-STD-1760 smart weapons interface to enable the use of precision-guided conventional weapons. CMUP began with Block A, which was the standard B-1B with the capability to deliver non-precision gravity bombs. Block B brought an improved synthetic aperture radar, and upgrades to the defensive countermeasure system and was fielded in 1995. Block C provided an enhanced capability for delivery of up to 30 cluster bomb units CBUs per sortie with modifications made to 50 bomb racks. Block D added a near-precision capability via improved weapons and targeting systems, and added advanced secure communications capabilities. The first part of the electronic countermeasures upgrade added Joint Direct Attack Munition, JDAM, AL-50 Towed Decoy System, and Anti-Jam Radios. Block E upgraded the avionics computers and incorporated the Wind Corrected Munitions Dispenser, WCMD, the AGM-154 Joint Standoff Weapon, JSOW, and the AGM-158 JASM, Joint Air-to-Surface Standoff Munition, substantially improving the bomber's capability. Upgrades were completed in September 2006. Block F was the Defensive Systems Upgrade Program DSUP, to improve the aircraft's electronic countermeasures and jamming capabilities, but it was cancelled in December 2002 due to cost overruns and schedule slips. In 2005, a program began to upgrade crew stations and integrate data linking. A B-1 equipped with the Fully Integrated Data Link FIDL first flew on 29 July 2009. The FIDL enables electronic data sharing, eliminating the need to enter information between systems by hand. In January 2013, Boeing delivered the first Integrated Battle Station IBS equipped B-1. This replaced several displays with new multi-function color display units, an upgraded central integrated test system, and a newer aircraft performance monitoring computer. 
In June 2012, the B1Bs are receiving sustainment block 16 upgrades to add Link 16 networking and digital flight instrumentation. In 2007, the Sniper XR targeting pod was integrated on the B1 fleet. The pod is mounted on an external hardpoint at the aircraft's chin near the forward bomb bay. Following accelerated testing, the Sniper pod was fielded in summer 2008. Future precision munitions include the small diameter bomb. In 2011, the Air Force was considering upgrading B-1s with multiple ejector racks so that they can carry three times as many smaller JDAMs than previously. In February 2014, work began on a multi-year upgrade of 62 B-1Bs, scheduled to be completed by 2019. The Vertical Situation Display Upgrade VSDU, replaces existing flight instruments with multifunction color displays, a second display aids with threat evasion and targeting, and act as a backup display. Additional memory capacity is to be installed for the Diagnostics Database. Procurement and installation of the IBS upgrades is expected to cost $918 million, research and engineering costs are estimated at $391 million. Other additions are to replace the two spinning mass gyroscopic inertial navigation system with ring laser gyroscopic systems and a GPS antenna, replacement of the APQ-164 radar with the scalable Agile Beam Radar, Global Strike SABRGS, active electronically scanned array, and a new attitude indicator. Topic. Operational history. Topic. Strategic Air Command The second B-1B, the Star of Abilene, was the first B-1B delivered to the USAF Strategic Air Command in June 1985. Initial operational capability was reached on 1 October 1986 and the B-1B was placed on nuclear alert status. The B-1 received the official name, Lancer. On 15 March 1990. However, the bomber has been commonly called the Bone, a nickname that appears to stem from an early newspaper article on the aircraft wherein its name was phonetically spelled out as B-1, with the hyphen inadvertently omitted. In late 1990, engine fires in two Lancers led to a grounding of the fleet. The cause was traced back to problems in the first stage fan, and the aircraft were placed on limited alert. In other words, they were grounded unless a nuclear war broke out. Following inspections and repairs they were returned to duty beginning on 6 February 1991. By 1991, the B-1 had a fledgling conventional capability, 40 of them able to drop the 500-pound MK-82 general purpose GP bomb, although mostly from low altitude. Despite being cleared for this role, the problems with the engines prevented their use in Operation Desert Storm during the Gulf War. B-1s were primarily reserved for strategic nuclear strike missions at this time, providing the role of airborne nuclear deterrent against the Soviet Union. The B-52 was more suited to the role of conventional warfare and it was used by coalition forces instead. Originally designed strictly for nuclear war, the B-1's development as an effective conventional bomber was delayed. The collapse of the Soviet Union had brought the B-1's nuclear role into question, leading to President George H. W. Bush ordering a $3 billion conventional refit. After the inactivation of Strategic Air Command SAC, and the establishment of the Air Combat Command ACC, in 1992, the B-1 developed a greater conventional weapons capability. Part of this development was the startup of the U.S. Air Force Weapons School B-1 Division. In 1994, two additional B-1 bomb wings were also created in the Air National Guard, with former fighter wings in the Kansas Air National Guard and the Georgia Air National Guard converting to the aircraft. By the mid-1990s, the B-1 could employ GP weapons as well as various CBUs. By the end of the 1990s, with the advent of the Block D upgrade, the B-1 boasted a full array of guided and unguided munitions. The B-1B no longer carries nuclear weapons, its nuclear capability was disabled by 1995 with the removal of nuclear arming and fusing hardware. 
Under provisions of the New START Treaty with Russia, further conversion were performed. These included modification of aircraft hardpoints to prevent nuclear weapon pylons from being attached, removal of weapons bay wiring bundles for arming nuclear weapons, and destruction of nuclear weapon pylons. The conversion process was completed in 2011, and Russian officials inspect the aircraft every year to verify compliance. Topic. Air Combat Command The B-1 was first used in combat in support of operations in Iraq during Operation Desert Fox in December 1998, employing unguided GP weapons. B-1s have been subsequently used in Operation Allied Force Kosovo, and, most notably, in Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan and the 2003 invasion of Iraq. The B-1's role in Operation Allied Force has been criticized as the aircraft was not used until after enemy defenses had been suppressed by aircraft like the older B-52 it was intended to replace. The B-1 has deployed an array of conventional weapons in war zones, most notably the GBU-31, 2,000-pound Joint Direct Attack Munition JDAM. In the first six months of Operation Enduring Freedom, eight B-1s dropped almost 40% of aerial ordnance, including some 3,900 JDAMs. JDAM munitions were heavily used by the B-1 over Iraq, notably on 7 April 2003 in an unsuccessful attempt to kill Saddam Hussein and his two sons. At the height of the Iraq War, a B-1 was continuously kept airborne to provide rapid precision bombardment upon important targets as intelligence identified them. During Operation Enduring Freedom, the B-1 was able to raise its mission-capable rate to 79%. The B-1 has higher survivability and speed than the older B-52, which it was intended to replace. It also holds 61 FAI world records for speed, payload, distance, and time to climb in different aircraft weight classes. In November 1993, three B-1Bs set a long-distance record for the aircraft, which demonstrated its ability to conduct extended mission lengths to strike anywhere in the world and return to base without any stops. The National Aeronautic Association recognized the B-1B for completing one of the 10 most memorable record flights for 1994. Of the 100 B-1Bs built, 93 remained in 2000 after losses in accidents. In June 2001, the Pentagon sought to place one-third of its then-fleet into storage. This proposal resulted in several U.S. Air National Guard officers and members of Congress lobbying against the proposal, including the drafting of an amendment to prevent such cuts. The 2001 proposal was intended to allow money to be diverted to further upgrades to the remaining B-1Bs, such as computer modernization. In 2003, accompanied by the removal of B-1Bs from the two bomb wings in the Air National Guard, the USAF decided to retire 33 aircraft to concentrate its budget on maintaining availability of remaining B-1Bs. In 2004, a new appropriation bill called for some of the retired aircraft to return to service, and the USAF returned seven mothballed bombers to service to increase the fleet to 67 aircraft. Currently, September 2017, the Air Force retains an active inventory of 62 aircraft assigned to squadrons at Dias AFB, Texas and Ellsworth AFB, South Dakota. On 14 July 2007, the Associated Press reported on the growing USAF presence in Iraq, including reintroduction of B-1Bs as a close-at-hand platform to support coalition ground forces. Since 2008, B-1s have been used in Iraq and Afghanistan in an armed overwatch role, loitering for surveillance purposes while ready to deliver guided bombs in support of ground troops if contacted. The B-1B underwent a series of flight tests using a 50-50 mix of synthetic and petroleum fuel. On 19 March 2008, a B-1B from Dias Air Force Base, Texas, became the first USAF aircraft to fly at supersonic speed using a synthetic fuel during a flight over Texas and New Mexico. This was conducted as part of an ongoing Air Force testing and certification program to reduce reliance on traditional oil sources. 
On 4 August 2008, a B-1B flew the first sniper advanced targeting pod equipped combat sortie where the crew successfully targeted enemy ground forces and dropped a GBU-38 guided bomb in Afghanistan. In March 2011, B-1Bs from Ellsworth Air Force Base attacked undisclosed targets in Libya as part of Operation Odyssey Dawn. With upgrades to keep the B-1 viable, the Air Force may keep it in service until approximately 2038. Despite upgrades, the B-1 has repair and cost issues, every flight hour needs 48.4 hours of repair. The fuel, repairs, and other needs for a 12-hour mission cost $720,000 as of 2010. The $63,000 cost per flight hour is, however, less than the $72,000 for the B-52 and the $135,000 of the B-2. In June 2010, senior USAF officials met to consider retiring the entire fleet to meet budget cuts. The Pentagon plans to begin replacing the aircraft with the Northrop Grumman B-21 Raider after 2025. In the meantime, its capabilities are particularly well suited to the vast distances and unique challenges of the Pacific region, and we'll continue to invest in, and rely on, the B-1 in support of the focus on the Pacific. As part of President Obama's pivot to East Asia, in August 2012, the 9th Expeditionary Bomb Squadron returned from a six-month tour in Afghanistan. Its nine B-1Bs flew 770 sorties, the most of any B-1B squadron on a single deployment. The squadron spent 9,500 hours airborne, keeping one of its bombers in the air at all times. They accounted for a quarter of all combat aircraft sorties over the country during that time and fulfilled an average of two to three air support requests per day. On 4 September 2013, a B-1B participated in a maritime evaluation exercise, deploying munitions such as laser-guided 500 pounds GBU-54 bombs, 500 pounds and 2,000 pounds joint direct attack munitions JDAM, and long-range anti-ship missiles LRASM. The aim was to detect and engage several small craft using existing weapons and tactics developed from conventional warfare against ground targets. The B 1 is seen as a useful asset for maritime duties such as patrolling shipping lanes. The USAF had 66 B 1Bs in service in September 2012, split among four squadrons organized into two bomb wings the 7th Bomb Wing at Dias AFB, Texas, and the 28th Bomb Wing at Ellsworth AFB, South Dakota, beginning in 2014, the B-1 was used by the U.S. against the Islamic State is, in the Syrian Civil War. From August 2014 to January 2015, the B-1 accounted for 8% of USAF sorties during Operation Inherent Resolve. The 9th Bomb Squadron was deployed to Qatar in July 2014 to support missions in Afghanistan, but when the air campaign against us began on 8 August, the aircraft were employed in Iraq. During the Battle of Kobane in Syria, the squadron's B-1s dropped 660 bombs over five months in support of Kurdish forces defending the city, one-third of all bombs used during OIR during the period, killing some 1,000 ISIL fighters. The 9th Bomb Squadron's B-1s went Winchester, dropping all weapons on board, 31 times during their deployment. They dropped over 2,000 JDAMs during the six-month rotation. B-1s from the 28th Bomb Wing flew 490 sorties where they dropped 3,800 munitions on 3,700 targets during a six-month deployment. In February 2016, the B-1s were sent back to the U.S. for cockpit upgrades. Topic. Air Force Global Strike Command As part of a USAF organizational realignment announced in April 2015, all B-1B aircraft are to be reassigned from Air Combat Command to Global Strike Command GSC, effective 1 October 2015. On 8 July 2017, the USAF flew two B-1 Lancers near the North Korean border in a show of force amid increasing tensions, particularly in response to North Korea's 4 July test of an ICBM capable of reaching Alaska. On the 14th 
14 April 2018, B-1B bombers launched 19 AGM-158 JASM missiles as part of the 2018 bombing of Damascus and Homs in Syria. Topic variants B-1A The B-1A was the original B-1 design with variable engine intakes and Mach 2.2 top speed. Four prototypes were built, no production units were manufactured. B-1B The B-1B is a revised B-1 design with reduced radar signature and a top speed of Mach 1.25. It is optimized for low-level penetration. A total of 100 B-1Bs were produced. B-1R The B-1R was a proposed upgrade of existing B-1B aircraft. The B-1R regional would be fitted with advanced radars, air-to-air -air missiles, and new Pratt & Whitney F-119 engines. This variant would have a top speed of Mach 2.2, but with 20% shorter range. Existing external hardpoints would be modified to allow multiple conventional weapons to be carried, increasing overall loadout. For air-to-air -air defense, an active electronically scanned array AESA radar would be added and some existing hardpoints modified to carry air-to-air -air missiles. If needed the B-1R could escape from unfavorable air-to-air -air encounters with its Mach 2 plus speed. Few aircraft are capable of sustained speeds over Mach 2. Topic. Operators. The USAF had 62 B-1Bs in service as of August 2017. United States United States Air Force Strategic Air Command 1985-1992 Air Combat Command 1992-2015 Air Force Global Strike Command 2015-present Air National Guard Air Force Flight Test Center, Edwards AFB, California Topic. Aircraft on display B-1A B-1B Topic. Accidents and incidents From 1984 to 2001, 10 B-1s were lost due to accidents with 17 crew members or people on board killed. In September 1987, B-1B S N840052 from the 96th Bomb Wing, 338th Combat Crew Training Squadron, Dias AFB crashed near La Junta, Colorado while flying on a low-level training route. This was the only B-1B crash to occur with six crew members aboard. The two crew members in jump seats, and one of the four crew members in ejection seats perished. The root cause of the accident was thought to be a bird strike on a wing's leading edge during the low-level flight. The impact was severe enough to sever fuel and hydraulic lines on one side of the aircraft, the other side's engines functioned long enough to allow for ejection. The B-1B fleet was later modified to protect these supply lines. In October 1990, while flying a training route in eastern Colorado, B-1B SN860128 from the 384th Bomb Wing, 28th Bomb Squadron, McConnell AFB, experienced an explosion as the engines reached full power without afterburners. Fire on the aircraft's left was spotted. The number one engine was shut down and its fire extinguisher was activated. The accident investigation determined that the engine had suffered catastrophic failure, engine blades had cut through the engine mounts and the engine became detached from the aircraft. In December 1990, B-1B-S-N830071 from the 96th Bomb Wing, 337th Bomb Squadron, Dias AFB, Texas, experienced a jolt that caused the No. 3 engine to shut down with its fire extinguisher activating. This event, coupled with the October 1990 engine incident, led to a 50-plus day grounding of the B-1B's not on nuclear alert status. The problem was eventually traced back to problems in the first stage fan, and all B-1Bs were equipped with modified engines. Topic. Specifications B-1B 
Data from USAF Fact Sheet, Jenkins, Pace, Lee General Characteristics Crew, 4 Aircraft Commander, Copilot, Offensive Systems Officer, and Defensive Systems Officer Length, 146 feet 45 meters Wingspan, 137 feet 42 meters Lower wingspan, 79 feet 24 meters swept. Height, 34 feet 10 meters. Wing area, 1,950 square feet 181 square meters. Airfoil, NACA 691902. Empty weight, 192,000 pounds 87,090 kilograms. Gross weight, 326,000 pounds, 147,871 kilograms. Max takeoff weight, 477,000 pounds, 216,364 kilograms. Power plant, 4 times General Electric F101 GE102 afterburning turbofan engines, 17,390 lbf, 77.4 kilonewtons, thrust each dry, 30,780 lbf, 136.9 kilonewtons, with afterburner performance. Maximum speed, 721 kn, 830 miles per hour, 1,335 kilometers per hour, m1.25, at 40,000 feet, 12,000 meters, 608 kn, 700 miles per hour, 1,126 kilometers per hour, m0.92, at 200 to 500 feet, 61 to 152 meters, range, 5,100 nmi, 5,900 miles. 9,400 km Combat range, 2,993 nmi 3,444 miles, 5,543 km Service ceiling, 60,000 feet 18,000 meters Rate of climb, 5,678 feet per minute 28.84 meters per second Wing loading, 167 pounds per square foot, 820 kilograms per square meter. Thrust, weight, 0.28 armament. Hardpoints, 6 external hardpoints for 50,000 pounds, 23,000 kilograms of ordnance and 3 internal bomb bays for 75,000 pounds, 34,000 kilograms of ordnance, with a capacity of 125,000 pounds, 57,000 kilograms internal and external. Bombs, 84 times MK82 air inflatable retarder, air, general purpose, GP, bombs. 81 times MK82 low drag general purpose LDGP bombs 84 times MK62 quick strike sea mines 24 times MK84 general purpose bombs 24 times MK65 naval mines 30 times CBU-8789 CBU-97 cluster bomb units CBU 30 times CBU 103, 104, 105 wind corrected munitions dispenser, WCMD, CBUs. 24 times GBU 31 JDAM GPS guided bombs, MK 84 GP or Blue 109 warhead. 15 times GBU 38 JDAM GPS guided bombs, MK 82 GP warhead. 48 times GBU 38 JDAM using rotary launcher mounted multiple ejector racks 48 times GBU 54 Lasergem using rotary launcher mounted multiple ejector racks 96 times or 144 times GBU 39 small diameter bomb GPS guided bombs not fielded on B1 yet 24 times AGM-154 Joint Standoff Weapon JSOW. 24 x AGM-158C Long Range Anti-Ship Missile LRASM. 24 times AGM-158 Joint Air to Surface Standoff Missile JASM. Previously up to 24 times B-61 or B-83 nuclear bombs could be carried. Avionics 
1 times n APQ 164 forward looking offensive passive electronically scanned array radar 1 times an ALQ 161 radar warning receiver and defensive jamming equipment 1 times an ASQ 184 defensive management system 1 times sniper advanced targeting pod optional topic notable appearances in media topic see also political positions of ronald reagan asalm advanced strategic air launched missile aircraft of comparable role configuration and era tupolev 222m Tupolev Tu-160 General Dynamics FB-111 Related lists List of active United States military aircraft List of bomber aircraft <laughs>